Do you sometimes desire to get away from all the noise and just chill? While most of us are satisfied with a weekend trip to the mountains, others just pack up and move in with the wild. Life in these places isn't easy, but it is free to some of the complexities of modern day life. Here are the top 20 most isolated communities at the end of the earth. Tristan de Cunha, British Overseas Territory. The volcanic island of Tristan de Cunha boasts a population of 258 people with only nine different last names. The locals speak English, but have also invented their own dialect with words derived from Scottish, St. Helian, South African, American, Italian, and Irish languages. This is reflective of their various places of origin. Located in the South Atlantic, South Africa is the nearest country to this British overseas territory. It is said to be the most isolated community in the world. To get there, you have to time your visit to one of the three ships that make nine trips from Cape Town each year, a journey of 1,732 miles. Barrow, Alaska. There are no roads to Barrow. The town is only accessible by plane, but the hour and a half flight from Anchorage is doable. Sitting at the very top of Alaska, their winter consists of 65 straight days of darkness. Because of its remote location, the cost of living there is high. It'll cost you $10 for a jar of peanut butter, $10 for a gallon of milk, and $9.59 for the equal amount of water. According to one resident, there are thousands more caribou than people in Barrow. Cape York Peninsula, Australia The northernmost point of Australia, Cape York, is a peninsula that's crawling with crocodiles. The strange place is owned by five indigenous communities who also manage its tourism. Cape York is a 28-hour drive from Cairns, and a four-wheel drive vehicle is a must. In 1606, Dutch sailor Wilhelm Janszoon, on board the Dijfken, reached Australia as its first known European explorer. He docked at the Cape York Peninsula. Besides his visit, there has been little foreign contact as much of Cape York Peninsula frontier wilderness. Pitcairn Island, British Overseas Territory. These isolated communities live 3,300 miles from New Zealand, which serves as the island's administrative headquarters. No plane or helicopter has ever landed there, so getting in requires a 32-hour yacht ride. Not much is known about the island's first settlers. European mutineers of a ship called Bounty discovered the remains of a Polynesian civilization, including stone gods, burial sites, and earth ovens in 1790. The mutineers then settled there. In 2004, six local men were convicted of on the population of 50. Quite a sobering story to ponder over as we climb up. Remember to share your thoughts on the comment section. I took court to meet Greenland. Founded in 1925 by the settlers of Tasklak, the West Greenland Aitokokromit is as far away as you can get from any other inhabited area of Greenland. It is so remote that a helicopter is the best way to get to the town. Its 450 residents enjoy dog sledding and camping, while tourists visit to see the northern lights and other natural wonders. It's also a cruise destination despite sea ice that blocks any ship from docking for nine months of the year. Kerguelen Islands, French Southern and Antarctic Lands. The Kerguelen Islands in the Indian Ocean are part of the French Southern and Antarctic Lands. They're 2,000 miles from the southernmost part of Africa and are only accessible by ship four days a year. The island is so remote and the landscape so harsh that it has also been called the Desolation Islands. It is surrounded by 300 other islets scattered over 2,400 square miles. Coated by glaciers, the Kerguelen Islands receive rain, sleet, or snow 300 days a year. Most of the people who live there are French researchers. Siwa Oasis, Egypt Even though the oasis is such an isolated place, the inhabitants of Siwi language and Amazigh culture have been preserved. Located in the middle of Egypt's western desert, it is not a common stop for tourists. However, if you can brave the five-hour desert bus ride from Cairo, you can enjoy locally grown dates and olives, swim in Cleopatra's Bath Mineral Spring, and stay at the famous Desert Eco Lodge, built out of mud and salt. Hit the thumbs up sign if you can. Changtang, Tibet Known as the roof of the world, Changtang's altitude ranges from 4,000 to 9,000 feet above sea level. The 990-mile stretch of land across the Tibetan Plateau is home to a forgotten people called the Chengpa. 
Wildlife like snow leopards and yaks thrive in its cold, arid climate. You will need a permit to enter Changtang, which can cost several thousand dollars. It is accessible via Li Airport, Udamper Railway Station, or a drive from Manali or Sringar towns. A member of the Tibet Autonomous Region, it is a province-level entity of the People's Republic of China, governed by the people's government and led by a chairman. Who would have known you could live 9,000 feet up? Via Las Estrellas, Antarctica. Via Las Estrellas, Spanish for Star Town, is a Chilean settlement in Antarctica. It is just like any other small town with a gym, church, public school, and a souvenir shop. It is also one of only two residential towns on the entire continent. The rest of the uninhabited areas are research outposts populated by scientists. Getting to Antarctica requires a two-day boat trip from Ushuaia, Argentina, to cross the Drake Passage into the Antarctic Circle. Socotra Island, Yemen This is one of the most middle-of-nowhere places on Earth, thanks to its weird-looking dragon's blood tree. Located on Yemen's Gulf of Aden, Socotra Island hosts over 800 rare species of plants, a third of which cannot be found anywhere else in the world. Some of the flora do look a bit extraterrestrial, but their odd shapes reflect how they've adapted to the island's tropical desert climate. A UNESCO World Heritage Site, Socotra Island has 40,000 inhabitants, but only built its first road in 2011. The habitation is about 400 miles from Sana'a, the capital of Yemen, from which flights are available. Supai, Arizona Here, handwritten mail is delivered by mule. Supai is a tribal center of the Havasupai tribe, which means people of the green-blue waters. This is in reference to the four waterfalls along Havasu Creek that are popular with tourists. From the hilltop parking lot, there is an eight-mile trail to Supai Village. This trail may be traveled either on foot or horse. Supai has one small air-conditioned lodge and a convenience store and a cafe. In the last census, there were 43 households, out of which 34.9% were married families living together, 32.6% had a female householder with no husband present. Cooper Petty, Australia. This isolated place is known as the opal capital of the world. Gem quality opal was first discovered there in 1915. The mining industry continues to sustain a small town of 3,500 people, a two hour flight away from Adelaide. The district council of Cooper Petty estimates the population to be 2,500 people. The interest fact is this community has approximately 60% of the people being of European heritage, having migrated from Southern and Eastern Europe. Longyearbyen, Norway. This northernmost town in the world is so cold that it is illegal to bury someone there. Bodies won't decompose in the frozen ground and may be exposed when the ice melts. Instead, the dead have to be flown to the mainland for burial. Houses also have to be built on stilts so that they don't slide away when the topsoil melts in the summer. Norwegian Airlines offers three flights a week, which are three hours long from Oslo. La Rinconada, Peru. The town sits three miles above Peru's mountains, Puno province, making it the highest city in the world. According to CNN, the town has no running water or sewage system, and nearly 68% of the population lives below the poverty line. Getting there isn't easy. La Rinconada is a six-hour ride from the nearest capital on unpaved roads with no regular buses. Your best bet is to hitch a ride. La Rinconada's economy is fueled almost entirely by the nearby gold mine. So ironical. Bantam, Cocos Island. With a population of 600, the Cocos Islands are home to the Cocos Malay people. Their isolation has kept their traditional oral language and religious practices alive. In addition to getting acquainted with the local culture, visitors can go kite surfing, snorkeling, and bird watching. The Cocos Islands are about 1,700 miles from Perth, from which there are flights twice a week. The population of around 600 people consists mainly of Cocos Malays, who mostly practice Sunni Islands and speak a dialect of Malay as their first language. Take a moment to appreciate your country as we step up to the top five most isolated communities at the end of the earth. Equalit Nunavut, Canada. Equalit is only accessible by sea or air. There are daily flights from Ottawa, 1,300 miles away. Its most famous attraction is the road to nowhere that tourists can walk, ride a bike, drive, or ski to, you guessed it, the middle of nowhere. 
Of approximately 28,000 Inuit living in Nunavut, more than half reside in the eastern Okikalu region of the territory. Easter Island, Chile. Easter Island's 900 iconic statues almost overwhelm the island's 3,300 residents. Its economy runs mostly on tourism, as people from around the world make the 2,300-mile journey from Chile to marvel at the figurines. The construction and purpose of the sculptures still remains a mystery. LAN is the only airline with flights to this UNESCO World Heritage Site. Tickets from the U.S. go for at least $900. Oymyken, Russia. This remote place is considered the coldest inhabited place on Earth. Its 500 residents live in darkness for 21 hours a day with an average temperature of minus 58 degrees. It is impossible to grow crops there. The inhabitants live on reindeer meat, frozen fish, and horse blood with macaroni, according to Wired. Indoor plumbing is also tricky since the water freezes, so most use outhouses. Getting there can take several days. From Moscow, a flight to either Yatsu or Magadan is the closest you can get. Both are over 560 miles away. Palmerston Cook Islands. But first, do us a favor. Click that like button to inspire us. Subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell and you won't miss any interesting videos. Done then? Let's go. All of the Palmerston Islanders are descendants of one Englishman, William Marsters. The master arrived there in 1863 and went on to have four wives and 17 children. Supply ships visit the island only a few times a year. There are two telephones and internet access is only available four hours a day. Palmerston is a two-day sailing voyage from Rarotonga, the capital of Cook Islands, and an eight-day trip from Tahiti. The island's council consists of six members, the three heads of each family, and three other members appointed by each family. Sounds like more of an organizing committee for a reunion. Remarkably, they are mostly young people. I hope you have picked your next getaway by now, but we have one more. Torsham, Faroe Islands. Torsham is the smallest capital city in the world, but it packs a big punch. It's named after Thor, the god of thunder and lightning in Norse mythology. Situated halfway between Norway and Iceland, this small town's locals are proud of their hospitality. Their official website says, This is the sort of place where people still have time for each other. Atlantic Airways and Scandinavian Airlines offer direct flights from several popular destinations, including Denmark, Scotland, Iceland, and Norway. Which of the isolated places surprised you the most? Would you like to visit any of them? Share your thoughts in the comments section. Like always, if you enjoyed it, be sure to give us a big thumbs up and leave us some love in the comment section. To keep up to date with all of our awesome videos, be sure to hit subscribe and turn your notifications on to never miss a thing. Until next time, do take care of yourself.